um, which is totally fine. Um, but I think the thing that comes up for me, if if it is kind of based on one of the cases, is um, that it was very difficult to to kind of um, the youth always kind of had it in their mind how their transition was going to work. I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this. And, and it was all a very binary related kind of transition process in how they were thinking about it. And then as they, as they began to kind of try on different non-binary identities and, and, Um, they started to kind of talk about, at least with the, with the, um, kid that I worked with, where we kind of got to was a general not wanting to talk about things because they were just kind of at that place. But also that they really thought that if they that if they said anything about this and really delved into it, it would mean that their options for any of that medical transition that they had always thought they were going to do would be off the table. And so they were like, I can't I don't want to explore that the non binary shift, because if I explore that, that means that I'm never going to be able to get estrogen or I'm never going to be able and it was kind of like having some education around no it doesn't mean that what it means is we are trying to meet your embodiment goals and if your embodiment goals are such that you need a certain type of medical intervention then you need that medical intervention and we can move forward with that and you don't have to be afraid that um that your identity is going to drive necessarily drive your medical decision it's more about your embodiment goals are going to are going to drive some of the medical decision making and so i don't know that's kind of how we were able to get through that impasse um so i don't know what other people kind of have to say about that but 